So today we're going to answer the old age question that I still get asked a lot today by budget gamers and new builders. How much RAM do you actually need for a gaming PC? Is it 8 gigabytes? 16 gigabytes? Or is it even 32 gigabytes? Well, let's find out. Now today's tests are not going to be fully scientific because we don't generally do that here on the channel which means we're going to go for some standard configurations. We're not going to test every single configuration out there, every single RAM speed and stuff like that. We're just going to go for the most common stuff that people ask for and we're going to be using this. This is a Patriot Viper RAM that they recently sent to us. They actually sent a lot of this stuff to us so it kind of gave us the idea for this video and particularly with the amount of people that ask those kind of questions I thought it was finally time to give it an answer. The tests that we're going to run today are like I say pretty common configurations or particularly what people will purchase and what they're asking me for. So for the first test we're going to go for 8 gigabytes just in a single stick. Many people out there will just use a single stick of 8 gigabytes worth of RAM. It is 3600 megahertz, so it's pretty fast, but of course, running in single channel, you're gonna get half the speed anyway. So that is gonna affect everything. For those people out there that do go out and buy RAM and they're trying to save a little bit when they're first building their machine, they will only buy one stick because it's pretty much impossible really nowadays to buy two sticks of full gigabyte, particularly if you're looking at RGB stuff. So that's pretty common for people to pick up. And it also includes those who buy pre-builds. If you buy a cheap pre-build, generally they only give you one stick of ram if you buy something that's actually quite high end they do tend to go for dual channel nowadays but mostly it's single channel so that's going to give a good test there then when we go to 16 gigabytes we're just going to double up on the same ram here again we're going to run it at 3600 megahertz and it's going to be two sticks of the same patriot viper ram so that's going to give us a good test at 16 gigabytes 16 gigabyte for the longest time now has been the pretty much the common thing for gaming pcs to use so i expect that one to perform reasonably well then for the last test what we're going to do is we're going to actually bump that up to two sticks of 16 gigabytes that's going to give us a total of 32. most people nowadays say that this is the minimum that you should be using but i'm sure our tests will actually show us that if you are somebody that is using a super high-end gaming pc you'll probably want to go for a minimum of 32 gigs because hopefully you're trying to run games in at least 4k now we're not going to be running games in 4k today like i say we're going to be using common configurations so we're going to stick with the uh, 1440p resolution with a high preset and the game that we're going to test is just one game and it's going to be one of the most demanding games that there are out there alan wake 2. we may test a few other games as we go along at some point in the video but if we don't get around to it that game should give us a good indication of which ram configuration would work perfectly fine for gaming at least now for budget gamers and people that are trying to put brand new machines together to get into the actual uh, PC gaming frame. The test machine that we're going to be using today is our benching rig. Inside of here we do have an AMD Ryzen 7 5800X 3D. It's just a CPU that I haven't been able to let go of yet. They are so good and of course the X3D is going to at least give us a little bit of a boost when it comes to memory and stuff like that. It means that the CPU is not going to be as dependent on it as much as possible but that will give us the best case scenario. Generally, we normally run this machine with this uh, four sticks of G-Skill 3200 MHz uh, DDR4. That's worked perfectly fine for us up till now. I've never actually seen the machine hit that 32 gigabytes or even come close. So hopefully that gives us an indication here of what the test results are going to be. And then for the graphics card, I've actually torn out my home graphics card, the AMD Radeon RX 7900 XT. Now the RX 7900 XT does have 20 gigabytes of VRAM so that should again relieve any kind of bottleneck that we've got in the system particularly when it comes to transferring data around and producing a picture on the screen but for many of you out there that have watched videos like this in the past I can generally tell you that a lot of reviewers don't actually understand how memory works they will literally just give you some stats in the corner and tell you what that stat is in the corner but when you do look at the stats in the corner of your uh, screen, particularly if you're using something like MSI Afterburner, that is actually not how much memory the game is currently using. What that is, is that is the allocation that the software is asking for from the system. So it may actually be using less than that. Now we saw this in things like the last of us part one when they originally released that game lots of people were saying that it was using huge amounts of ram and vram because uh, they both technically work in similar ways and then suddenly it didn't and that was because they were actually allocating memory as part of that game in a way that it basically was using percentages to do it so it was allocating a percentage of the ram or vram that you had available and that's what was shown on the screen it was never actually using that much ram so when they actually fixed it 
everybody's RAM utilization went down and somehow people thought magic had happened, but that's exactly what they did. They basically just changed how the software allocates or requests the allocation from the system of how much RAM that it would potentially need. So it's worth taking that into note here. Now that number will go up and down as the game and the settings are changed because of course the allocation will change, but it doesn't always mean the game is using that. If the system doesn't have it available, it just simply cannot allocate it and it will allocate as much as it can. And then sometimes the games run perfectly fine. You'll probably see that as we go along today, but you can take that from me because I spent 20 years as a software developer. Uh, so I kind of know how RAM works. But the first thing that we need to do now is obviously take out the G skill RAM that we've got in here, add in our eight gigabytes and get a game started. First stick of memory installed, but before we actually start running around, we'll go double check settings. Pop over to options here, we'll go to graphics. We're currently running in 1440p, which is exactly what we said we were going to do with a native resolution. So we're not really using FSR here. We've got VSync disabled. We've got all the fancy effects on motion blur, film grain, lens distortion, and we're currently running in a high preset. That's exactly where we want to be. What we'll do is we'll reset the stats in the game and then we'll go for a bit of a walk or a bit of a run around the block and see what happens. Now the results there are actually quite interesting because with only eight gigabytes of RAM, which is less than what the game needs as well, you will get an error when you start this game saying that it should or recommends you having 12 gigabytes of RAM. We got that error because we've only got eight gigabytes, but you can still continue on. You can press next. And while we were playing the game, it actually seemed perfectly fine. I'm quite surprised that a single channel stick of eight gigabytes of RAM actually plays this game perfectly fine. The maximum rough allocation that we used throughout the whole game was around six and a half gigabytes of ram so that's pretty interesting to know but now what we need to do is install the 16 gigabytes and see how well it performs with that Now, surprisingly with 16 gigabytes of vram in there it didn't actually make that much of an impact i was quite surprised at that being dual channel we'd expect it to be much faster but everything actually stayed very similar i have noted down the results and we'll take a look at them fully over but now we've got 32 gigabytes sitting in the machine we're going to rerun the same test again we'll run all the way around the block and we'll see if it makes any difference at all So then from our testing, we haven't actually seen that much of a difference in the results. Overall, running the system with eight gigabytes of RAM, we managed to get an average of 84 frames per second with a 1% low of 60. That's actually not too bad considering the uh, performance of this system on that game. And we got a pretty much a max allocation of RAM here of around 6.7 gigabytes. That is obviously more than enough if you've got eight gigabyte, but that's exactly what the game is requesting from the system based on the amount that it can actually provide. With 16 gigabytes, we managed to get an average of 87 frames per second with a 1% low of 69. Small increases here, but not that much to be honest. There's a bigger increase on the 1% low, which is good to see. And for that one, we had a maximum allocation of RAM of around 9.2 gigabytes. So of course, even when you have double the RAM there, it's not really requesting that much in terms of an allocation. When we run the test with 32 gigabytes of RAM, we managed to get an average of 88 frames per second. But then with the 1% low, we got exactly the same as when we used 16 of 69. That means that that's basically the same thing, even though the system was allocating around 11.2 gigabytes for that. Now to make things fair, we did decide to test another game and that game was Cyberpunk 2077. That game is a much bigger open world game and it should actually use much more RAM than the Alan Wake 2, even though Alan Wake 2 is very demanding. When we ran that game with only eight gigabytes of RAM, we managed to get an average of 125 frames per second with a 1% low of 94. That game used an allocation of 7.7 .7 gigabytes or a maximum allocation of that. Then when we used 16 gigabytes, we managed to get an average of 128 frames per second with a 1% low of 90. 
1999. For that one, the maximum allocation of RAM there was around 9.8 gigabytes. So again, it's still not double, even though we are starting to increase on our 1% uh, lows and things here. When we ran the game with 32 gigabytes, we didn't really see that much of a change when it came to performance. Now getting an average of 131 frames per second with a 1% low, exactly the same as the 16 gigabyte, just as we saw in the other game of 99. This time though the system allocated around 13.1 gigabytes of RAM which is much better because it's obviously allocating a lot more because we've got a lot more but overall that generally shows you that there isn't actually that much of a difference. When you come to build a gaming system or a system that is specifically just for gaming whether you use 8 gigabytes single channel, whether you use 16 gigabytes in dual channel or 32 gigabytes, it doesn't seem to make that much of a difference. There is minute increases in those frames per second when using a system in these general, more common types of settings. For those of you out there that actually want to play games in 4K, it's a completely different story. 4K is a much more demanding resolution and it requires a lot more from the system. So if you are a 4K gamer, I would highly recommend that you do go for a minimum of 32 gigabytes and and the fastest RAM that you can find or at least afford because it's going to give you a much better experience. This is also only dependent on the fact that the system is only playing a game. If you are somebody that has a lot of other things open in the background like Discord, browsers, Twitter, X, that kind of stuff, of course you'll need a little bit more RAM because all of those applications will also need to use it. So I would highly recommend for anybody building a system, particularly if you are a budget gamer, definitely try to aim for that 16 gigabytes. But if all you can afford or if all you have in the system that you have purchased is eight gigabytes, even in single channel, it doesn't really make that much of a difference. Now I know a lot of you out there would say this is not scientific. We didn't test multiple resolutions. We didn't test multiple presets. We didn't test thousands of games, but to be honest, we never do on this channel. What we tend to do is we look at the most common stuff that people are asking us and we test exactly that. And this is the kind of stuff that I was asked for. And I find it super interesting because a lot of people out there will actually overspend on things when they clearly do not need to. Let me know in the comments below what you think of this and have you ever run into a lack of RAM on your system and a requirement to upgrade? Let me know the circumstances that you did that and the use case that you used. Did you have lots of applications open in the background or are you just gaming on it? It'd be really interesting to see which games that you use so I can probably give another test and see if I can replicate the same thing. I want to thank Patriot again for sending across all the RAM that they did so that we can do tests like this and I'm sure as always I'll catch you guys in the next one.